welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika's Den. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. So, guys, this is my review recap for Bel Air Season 2, Episode 2, Speaking Truths. Baby, we got Will out here on this basketball court. Okay, going hard, trying to impress Doc. We got Doc in his ear and his niece Jackie on his arm, okay? We got Uncle Phil peeping game, and it's not the basketball game. It's damn Doc and what he's up to, you know what I'm saying? We got him also going to Jeffrey and telling him, we need you back home, okay? Jeffrey is back in the building where he needs to be. And we got Aunt Viv trying to get in touch with Reed, but Reed playing peekaboo, you know. We got Ashley seeing that she's messing up with Jazz, and now she want to go ahead and introduce him to the parents. And we got, you know, Ashley, little Ashley, basically upset that the original Don Dada Ashley, okay, a.k.a. Miss Hughes, done got fired for sharing curriculum with her. Child, let's go ahead and get into it, take it from the top. So, of course, we started out this episode basically... You know, seeing Will on this basketball court, his um coach keeps on arguing with him. You know, he's not liking the plays that Will is doing. Well, not necessarily not liking the plays that he's doing, but wanting him to do it his way, right? He go ahead and decide that he wants him to pass this ball off to one of the other daggone teammates at the last minute. And I thought Will wasn't going to listen to him and was going to do his own thing, but he did listen, and it cost them the game. They end up losing the game, so, of course, Will is upset about that. And he tries to go running up to Dag on Doc and say, you know, well, you see, no, I was playing good anyway, right? And Doc is busy telling him, but yeah, you got to take over. I'm not seeing that Philly coming out of you, you know. Sometimes even when the coach tells you not to do something, you have to go against it and do what you feel is right to be able to win the game, okay? And, of course, this is when Uncle Phil is first noticing that he's there and he's like, hmm, what's going on? You know, he's also seeing Jeffrey across the daggone um, court and Viv is saying, you need to go ahead and talk to him and stop messing around, you know, <laughs> with your foolishness and foolery. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and talk to him later and we're going to talk or whatever the case may be, okay? And so, you know, um, when they get back to the house, Carlton comes up to Uncle Phil and is basically telling him, you know, have you made a decision about my medication? Do you know what you're going to do? You know, my anxiety medication is giving me anxiety. I haven't been sleeping right and all different kind of stuff. So Uncle Phil says that him and Viv is going to talk about it. They're going to talk with the doctor. They're going to, you know, do what they feel like is in the best interest. Now, I am happy, at least so far, that Carlton is opening up and coming to them. And we know we have to keep an eye out on him. Now, moving on from that, Uncle Phil also goes and checks on, you know, Will, because he says, I know what it feels like to lose, okay? If anybody knows, I do. And he was like, you know, I just want to check on you and make sure everything's all right. And so he's like, you know, what's up with that guy that was there at the game? You know, Will talking about, oh, Doc, oh, yeah, he's good, and he knows how to look out, you know, for the greats and make sure that you're doing the right thing and you get to the places that you want to get to and all of this. And so... You know, Uncle Phil is like, well, we, you know what I'm saying, shall see about that, right? And he was like, you know, I don't understand what's the problem when the game is on the line and you know that I could, you know, basically be the one to get out there and get the shot and win the game. Why wouldn't you want to put me out there? Every time you put me out there, I win every time. And he says, well, it sounds like you need a man-to-man -man with your coach. And it's not just about you. It's about the team. And so... You know, he's saying that Doc can basically help him get to the places that he's trying to get to. And he was like, well, where exactly is that, you know what I'm saying, supposed to be? You you could do that and get, you know what I'm saying, scholarships or whatever in multiple ways. And he's like, yeah, I understand that and I know that I can. But this is definitely, you know, a way that I could do it. It's a way that I can get a DI scholarship and it's a way for me to get into the league. And so he's basically like, you know, um... Okay, well, it's dinner time anyway, so we could pick this up later, right? And, you know, um, Will is like, okay, and then he tells him, be careful who you listen to, be careful who advises you in the first place and why they are trying to come and advise you all of a sudden, right? Sometimes people have ulterior motives, and, of course, Will is just looking at him when he says that. Now, in the meantime, Will and, you know, Carlton got head to school, and I do like how their relationship is going so far and the fact that they have gotten closer. And he's telling him all about, you know, the basketball team, of course, still complaining about what they did. 
And Carlton is pretty much telling him, like, yo, you know, just go talk to Coach. Pretty much the same thing that Uncle Phil said. Now, in the meantime, he's asking Carlton, are you still, you know, no. As a matter of fact, the young lady Carlton had the crush on comes up to him and says, are you still going to the BSU meeting? And he's like, yep, I'll be there. And she's saying she want to hear his plans. So Will is like, well, do you have plans? And Carlton is like, absolutely not. And he's like, you know, Will is like, you got this. And he's telling Will, you're not helping me. So we see Ashley in her class or whatever, and they are talking about the Great Gatsby. You know, one person says they really didn't understand it, didn't agree with it. This just so happens to be the same girl that's always looking and damn hating. So she says, well, write about that, you know, write which parts you disagree with, which parts you think was convoluted and which parts confuse you. And so she's like, okay, cool. But in the meantime, Ashley says, well, what if I could write something better? She said, well, then I challenge you to that. Go ahead and see. You know what I'm saying? What you can write better and hand that in. So, oh, hating ass girl is basically staring off because as they get up to leave, Ashley gives back the book saying that she finished that and she gives her another one. And I said, you know what, Ashley, you write th at this point, you should have been paying attention because you already know that the first time you was given the book, this girl was side eye. And if not her, Miss Hughes should have been more on point because she knows that this is against the daggone you know, curriculum. We see homegirl staring by the door and rolling her eyes again. I don't know why this is making her so upset that she's giving her a daggone book, but we know how it goes, right? Already a young Karen in the damn making. And so she was telling her that she's going to be able to relate to this book. And she's like, you know, okay, enjoy it. Let me know what you think about it and all that. In the meantime, Jazz is over here dancing it up in the store and Hillary comes in and sees him and bring him some lunch. She telling him it tastes just like a chicken sandwich or whatever, you know, he rocking out to too far. And so she's basically, he's basically like, what's going on? Are you pregnant or something? She like, hell to the no, okay, I want to borrow your car. And he like, hell no, nobody borrows my car. But of course she convinces him, you know, she talking about how cute she going to look behind the daggone wheel. And so he falls for it and was like, just be very careful. And she was like, I know how much you care about your car. I'm not going to let nothing happen to it. And he's basically like, get out of here before I change my mind. You lucky, you pretty. And I just was thinking in my head as soon as he gave her those keys, like something going to go wrong. Okay. Now, moving on from that, you know, we have Lisa come up to Carton and tell him like, you've been doing really good. You done changed up a lot of stuff. You're getting great grades. She's like, why don't you go for this Founders Award? I think you deserve it. If anybody could do it, it could be you. He's saying how no black student has ever won it. And she's like, well, you could be the first. He said, well, why don't you do it? She said, no, because I'm following the footsteps of my family or whatever the case may be. And I think she said she would be going to, um, you know, yell. And so he's basically saying, oh, was it Princeton? Because she was like, Princeton and Howard. And then he said he wanted to go to Yale. And she was like, why did? And he said, because he wanted to do no change things and do things his own way. And then she basically puts up the founders, you know, post again and was like, well, this is your chance. So now he's thinking about it. Now, Will tries to give a speech of encouragement to the daggone team and say, we all in this together. We all got to do better. Ain't no crying. You know, we got to get on each other when we fall off. And one of the guys going to stand up and talk about, we not your homies in the hood. Um, excuse me, I don't think we thought you were. And so Will was like, is this how you all feel? And everybody was quiet. And Will basically was just like, say less, all right? And he walks away. Now, Ashley sees that Miss Hughes done got fired. She's asking her what's going on. Why was she fired? And she's like, I can't talk to you. I can't tell you why. You know what I'm saying? It's against the rules. I cannot answer none of your questions. I'm not allowed. She's like, just continue to be you. Don't let nobody change you. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't do what you need to do. You know, don't worry about me. I'm going to be okay. Just keep being the amazing woman that you are. And so, of course, this guy, Ashley, and her feelings, she's not happy about it at all. So the next morning when they are all having breakfast. No, I'm sorry. I'm about to skip way ahead. Child, freaking Hillary, of course. Let's dag on her little partner, get ahead of her, and take over the damn car talking about she going to drive it a little bit more. Ivy, right? And she's like, no, I told Jazz that I was going to be the only one to drive. Oh, girl, I'm not going not even 10 feet. It's going to be okay. I said, Ivy about to crash this car, isn't she? But she doesn't crash it. What happens is 
Jazz shows up and he's basically like, you lied to me. You know, I confided in you. I let you hold my car, even though I never let anybody hold it. And you basically, you know, let Ivy sucker you out again. She's saying I wasn't lying. I was the one that's driving. But, you know, Ivy, and he was like, what is with you and Ivy with this friend of me shit? Like, get it together, girl, right? And so he's like, you always let her force you into things. And she's talking about that's not true. And then he was like, and another thing, you wanted to tell her that I was your boyfriend because she was pushing up on me. But yet I'm the only one that has us, you know, public on our IG or whatever. You don't have us public anywhere. So, of course, she's saying because she is a creator and an influencer, you know, she have to watch and keep a certain persona and all this. And so he's like, oh, I see. You could basically, you know say that we are a couple in private because she's like it's just business but you can't say it you know we official in public and so she's like exactly you get it and he walks away and she has this dumb look on her face child hillary girl <laughs> two steps forward one step back now in the meantime you know phil and vivian do have this sit down they have a virtual meeting with um carlton's doctor where he's saying this can be done and you know but we do have to keep an eye on him. We have to make sure what's going on um, with weaning him off the medications. Of course, there could be side effects from that, and there's always a chance. And if we see that things is going, you know, a wrong or bad way, we could always switch him back on. And so Phil is basically saying, like, well, we don't want him to be on medications for the rest of his life. But um, Viv was like, listen, if that's what it takes and if that's what he needs, then that's what's important, right? Am I right, doctor? And she is 110% right. So they do knock at Carlton's door and tell him, like, we discussed it, we spoke with your doctor, and we are going to start weaning you off starting tomorrow. But if you are feeling any kind of way, make sure you come and tell us. And he's hugging them, telling you know, you know, thank you, and he appreciates them, and he loves them, and he's happy that they have made this decision, right? And so we will see. Like I said, we got to keep an eye on Carlton. Now, moving on from that, you know, we'll go ahead and call up Jackie. And the first thing out his mouth is Doc. So she's like, so you was just calling me about Doc? Like, if that's what you want to talk about, boy, bye. And he's like, no, you didn't let me finish. I wasn't finished saying what I want to say to you. No, I do want to meet up with you and I want to see you again. And she's like, okay, well, then you can have your chance tonight. It's an after hour spot. You know, you can meet me later. And she's like, unless you need a permission slip. And he's basically like, nah, you know what I'm saying? I am going to, you know, be there. Don't worry about it, right? I got you. Don't matter. Just tell me where the spot is at. I said, okay, well. So, you know, moving on from that, we basically had um, Vivian, you know, see that Ashley was upset at breakfast or whatever, asking them what's going on. And they're all upset because they all say that they had Miss Hughes one time or another, you know, in middle school and that she was good and she always helped everybody. So, you know, I Viv say, I'm going to call a meeting and I'm going to see what's going on. So she got head to the school and, you know, some parents are saying like, yes, I love the work she do. She do good work. Other parents, and I can swear that little girl, that damn lady that was talking was that little girl mother child because they was given the same face. Oh, well, she should have just been following rules and she was, you know, giving out curriculum that she shouldn't have been giving out that we don't teach at this school. And one of the other ladies is saying, I get where you coming from, but she broke the rules and rules are rules. And Viv was saying, like, I could personally say that she has been a big influence on Ashley and helped her a lot. And a lot of the books that she gave her has been a book, great help and been great information to have. So when the lady tells Aunt Viv that there's nothing that can be done, Aunt Viv was like, we shall see about that, okay? And she go ahead and walk out the damn meeting. Now, moving on from there, Phil does finally come and see, you know, Jeffrey. And Jeffrey giving him, you know what I'm saying, a little bit of attitude because he was like, I came there, I tried to talk to you, and you wasn't wanting to be bothered. Phil says, yes, you 110% right. You know, he tells Phil that he knew how he was going to react. And Phil was like, and you did what you did, even though you knew who, how I was going to react. But he also says, at the end of the day, I know that if you did it, knowing how I was going to react, then you really must have believed what you was doing was right, and you did it for a good reason. And he says, I apologize. You know, I'm sorry that I treated you the way that I treated you, and I spoke to you the way that I spoke to you. And so we get a little bit more of Jeffrey's story where he's basically like, you know, here I understand I can't be around my son. I'm the one that made the decision, but here is a different story, okay? I feel a different way. That's still my family. And so I would like to know why that decision had to be made. 
Now, Phil says, okay, but that's not your only family. I'm your family, too. And he was like, no, you not, because you made it clear that I am just an employee, okay? I say, well, Phil, you did. All right, no lies detected. So he apologizes and say he should have never spoke to him that way, and he will never speak to him that way again. And he wants him to come back home, okay, where he belongs. He's like, you know, we all do. And so Jeffrey, go ahead and give him a cigar. So, you know, Jeffrey's back in the building. Now... Moving on from that, we basically had, um, you know, Hillary send Jazz this text that's basically like, I would like to apologize to you, you know what I'm saying, over some lunch. And he come on over, and she's basically telling him some of the stuff you said was right, you know what I'm saying, I agree with you, and I want you to go ahead and meet my parents. And he's like, really? Oh, damn, okay, that's where we going and he says that, you know, when is this? And she's like, right now. And he's like, are you serious? What the? And as soon as he's saying that, who come walking in the damn door? But her parents, you know, she talked. They like, well, I thought we was going to be here by ourselves. I thought this was a lunch that was just for us. We wasn't expecting Jazz to be here. They like, oh, hey, Jazz. And, you know, Hillary's like, yeah, well, I thought it would be good that, you know what I'm saying, y'all go ahead and meet my boyfriend. Now... They like boyfriend, you know, of course, they both look at each other, but they trying to play it off and be like, you know, okay, Jazz. And then Jazz coming up, hey, being trying to freaking shake Phil hand or whatever the case may be. And Phil just like, you know, trying to keep it cool, but you could just see by the looks on their faces. That had me cracking up, okay? Now, in the meantime, before that had happened, Will and them actually did sneak out and meet up with Jazz, right? Carlton ends up catching him when he was sneaking out and was like, well, do you know the best way to get up out of here? It's only one way that the cameras won't catch you. So they go out, of course, so that they could go to South Central and meet up with Jackie. And, you know, um, Jazz is looking like, what is Carlton doing here with us? And Carlton is like, look, I've just got some great news, so I want to go out and celebrate too. So they get in there, and Jazz is like, look, there better not be no drinking, no funny business or nothing going on. If it is, I'll drag you out of here like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm your daddy. Do you understand? And they say, yeah. So this is basically when, you know, they partying down. Jazz, I mean, Carlton is having a funky good time. He over here about to go get these two chicks they water, you know. Jackie shows up, and she's pleased to see Will and like, oh, okay, I knew you would find the place or whatever, right? And he had told her to give him a minute and went over there to check on Carlton. He's like, are you okay? Because Carlton was acting a little hyper, but Carlton's saying, yeah, I'm just enjoying myself, and I'm going to get them two chicks over there, you know what I'm saying, some water. And Will, like, wait a minute, too. He's like, oh, shoot, I'm so proud of you. But he like, you sure you okay? Because he acting all jittery. But he tells him, yeah. So now he goes back to Jackie, and he's dancing with her. He's like, I just had to check on my cousin. And she's like, okay. So one minute they dancing, and the next minute she's stopping. He's like, well, what happened? Why did you stop? Oh, my uncle was standing behind you. And, of course, the uncle is none other than Doc. So Will is apologizing for dancing up on Jackie and being there with her. But he's like, nah, you good. This ain't about Jackie. And he goes and sits him down and starts to tell him, how this school is limiting him, you know, they not doing what they need to do as far as he's, he's concerned and letting him shine, and how there's a way for him to actually be able to play for Doc's team and play for the school, because at first Will was like, you know, so do I have to leave the schools in order to get with you, and he's like, nah, players do this all the time, and so Will is telling him, tell me the time and place, but he tells Will, you know, I'm going to go ahead and reach out to you a later time. I'll keep you posted. I said, okay, well, watch it with this guy. I do not trust him. Not one freaking bit, y'all. So Jeffrey comes home and everybody's happy to see him. And he's like, all right, you know, I appreciate the love or whatever. We're going to catch up later. But according to my watch, everybody in here is about 10 minutes behind, 10 minutes late and need to get going. You know, him and Will say how they're happy that both of them are back home. And they're going to go ahead and catch up later. He was like, you know, how did you and Uncle Phil finally make amends? And Uncle Phil was like, that's between me and him. But one thing is for sure, we don't let brothers, you know, nothing come in between brothers, right? Especially not just one argument or disagreement. So they go ahead and leave. Now, in the meantime, Reed finally calls on Viv. But he basically insinuates to her what is basically the truth at this point that she's just mad that the interview was about him. And she's like, you damn right. It wasn't supposed to be about him. It was supposed to be about me and my work. And Uncle Phil is like, well, I feel sorry for him once you, you know what I'm saying, getting his dad going behind. He better watch out. 
Now, Ashley asked Aunt Viv if she heard anything else about, you know, Miss Hughes, and she's like, no, unfortunately, not so far, but, you know, we not gonna just leave it alone. I'm not saying that there's nothing else that could be done. Sometimes we have to fight, and of course, this gives Carlton the, the idea when he goes into the BSU meeting that he decides, you know, this is a cause we should fight for. Miss Hughes has done a lot for a lot of us, and you've got a lot of people that's agreeing with him. But then Will takes it a step further and was like, yeah, we should have a protest. We should have a walkout. As a matter of fact, a blackout. Now, one of the teachers in the back is like a blackout. You could tell she's not happy about what they say, but all the rest of them are agreeing like, yes, this is a great way for us to stand behind her back and let them know that our voices are, you know what I'm saying, to be heard and we're still here. So now when Carlton is walking out from the meeting, you know, old teacher pulling him to the side saying, you know, you might want to tread carefully with talking about all these things, right? She was like, I'm glad that you're interested and you're stepping up and having conversations in the BSU, but you might be going too far and it might mess up some of the other things that you are trying to get going on if you get my drift. And Carlton is basically like, oh, you don't have to worry about it. Me and my cousin was just talking. Now, Viv goes to read office for a supposed appointment, only to be told, I'm sorry, but he left early. He not here, you know what I'm saying, right now. He had an emergency. So first she like, oh, my God, emergency, is everything okay? But then come to find out, Reed over here playing damn games, y'all. He just don't want to face her. She talking about, no, I are emergency, you get my drift. And so Viv said, I got a damn art emergency, too. And you could tell him that I no longer need his services. I do not want to be bothered because what he not going to do, okay, is push me to the side. And his assistant is like, I think you better tell him that yourself. And she said, I would, but I have an emergency of my own and walk the hell on out. So I guess we won't be seeing Reed no more. Now, in the meantime... We have the guy from the basketball team come up to Will and say, I hope everything is going to be okay and we're going to be all right for the game. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be no more arguing and fighting. And Will is telling him, nah, we good. You'll see. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to start nothing with nobody. So Carlton is running up to Will after this and he's talking to him about this blackout and saying, you know, maybe we jumped the gun a little bit. But Will is like, nah, we good. This is going to be okay. That's just your anxiety talking. He was like, I'm going to show you tonight and give you a prime example of how things is done at this game. I said, oh, Lord, Will, what you about to do, Will? What you about to do? Because if there's one thing we know about Will, he going to be arrogant and he going to push over the damn top. So... Of course, it's time for the game, and Will is basically out there, and again, the coach starts to give him other directions, and this time, Will does what I thought he was going to do with the first game, and he takes over. You know, they did win the game, but he didn't listen to not one damn word that the freaking, you know, coach said. He's getting caught in, and um, Uncle Phil excited. And Doc is loving how it's going, right? And telling him, see, that's the way that it works after the game. You see, he couldn't bench you because you did such a great job. Now, at this point, Uncle Phil comes over and seduces himself and is like, I'm the legal guardian, so any conversations you want to have with my nephew, you need to go ahead and have them with me and my wife. And Doc is basically like, okay, looking forward to hearing from y'all. And Phil is like, yeah, if we decide we want to freaking speak to you, you know. Will is all excited talking about, oh, yeah, Uncle Phil, this is the guy I was telling you about. And then his coach says he want to see him in the locker room. Do you think he throwing Will off the team, y'all? I doubt it, but you could tell he was pissed. And so Phil had told him, like, go ahead, you know, catch up with the coach. Have the conversation that you need to have with him. And in the meantime... Uncle Phil let Doc know, you know what I'm saying, I'm the head and I see in charge. But that was basically the episode, y'all. What y'all thinking about, you know, Bel Air so far? What y'all think Doc going to be doing? Are we going to have to call Jeffrey out, you know what I'm saying, and let him show Doc what's really good? <laughs> what's up, Doc? All right. Put it in the comments. Let me know. Did you like it, not like it, you know what I'm saying? What is your rating? All that good stuff. Anything that I left out, let's discuss it down in the comments as well. Like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you are so inclined, give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. Till next time.